Aleluya. It is a blessing to be back home. Amen. Turn with me to Acts chapter 20. And I'm going to, we are receiving our offering now. Amen. Now, Acts 20 and verse. I'm going to give you some master keys, Paul's keys to prosperity. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Paul's master keys to prosperity. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. All right? Then, verse 33, first key to prosperity is I have coveted no man's silver or gold, or apparel. Amen. Coveting people's gold, or silver, or apparel, looking longingly at what belongs to others, often with a tinge of jealousy and envy, are you with me, is a master key to um, poverty. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. How many want to be poor? No one is lifting his hands. Okay. Now, why, why is it that coveting someone's gold or silver can affect you financially? How, how can desiring someone else's gold and silver uh, affect you financially? All right? And that's what I want to explain to you today. Amen. Now, th this is like the first message it's, it's, it's as good as the second one. So, um, listen very carefully. Amen. It may be more important for you to listen carefully to this particular message. Amen. How can coveting somebody's gold and silver affect your finances? Or affect your life. And Paul said, I have coveted no man's silver, gold, or apparel, or anything. I have not desired. The reason is that when you have in you streams of power that work in you, all right, other than clear logic and reason and clear reason according to the word of God what happens is that it affects your right thinking and it affects your decisions it affects your reasoning alright and you are not able to reason properly when you have in yourself other streams 
that are working. What I mean by streams are any of those invisible things which are also actually ways by which you even know that God created us. Because even if you can say that you can create a human being, can you create envy? You see, can you create love? Can you create hatred? Can you create peace? Is there a factory to create excitement? There's nowhere you create these things. So these invisible streams that are in human beings make things not to go as expected. Do you get what I'm saying? So that is why you are told, do not take decisions when you are sad. Do not take decisions when you are in a bad mood. Do not take decisions when you are emotionally disturbed. You are likely to take a wrong decision because the emotions will switch you completely off correct reasoning and simple thinking that should have gone in the right way for your life. Are you with me? And all through life, do you see, when those streams are working, you see that things should go a certain way, but they don't go that way because something else is present and something else is working. Like if you take like a nation like Ghana or a nation like Nigeria or a nation like England or America, any nation, if you go to America, everything should be perfect because they have so much money and so many bombs, so many planes, so many bullets. It should be, there shouldn't be anything like poverty in America. But in America, there is huge swaths and areas of poverty and difficulty. And many people are murderous and wicked and struggling. But that, it doesn't make sense. What I'm trying to say is that things will not make sense when there is something else working in the background. So Paul is saying that, look, that stream of coveting people's silver and gold, it wasn't in me. So, and it, it has its significance because if a pastor is coveting people's silver and gold, you pastor differently. You pastor completely differently. It's like we who are preaching we will follow our invitations to places where there's money, silver, and gold. Well, those where we are invited. And there they would maybe give us money and so on. So we would go to such places. So whereas maybe one place has never had a pastor visiting. And one place has 100 pastors visiting. You get what I'm trying to say? Yes. Like they say, 90-something percent of all preachers are in America, which is 5% of the world. You get what I'm saying? So, Paul said, I have coveted no man's silver. That means that I'm free from uh, those things. All right? So, please take note of that. And uh, if you look at John chapter 19, it may sound complex to you, but... The world is complex, so it was the 14, verse 14. It was the preparation of the Passover about the sixth hour, and he said unto the Jews, that's Pilate, behold your king. That's your king, Jesus. And what did they say? But they cried out, away with him. Okay, away with him. Crucify him. Again, you see, thinking is not working. How many will agree that the mind is not working well? And they're about to say one of the most astounding statements to come from, fall from the lips of a Jew in this state, in this verse. Is there a way with him? Crucify him. And Pilate said, Shall I crucify your king? All right. Now, this, the next statement is a shock. They said, the chief priests, the chief priests, 
They said, we have no king but Caesar. The only king we have. The, the king that we like, that we want. His name is Caesar. <laughs> oh, you don't get what I'm saying. Madness is working. You get it. These are Jews who hate these Romans and who hate the people who are oppressed. Yet what they are saying today is that there is no other person we know. We're telling Pilate. The person we know as our king. The is Caesar. He's our king. What, 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 what are you talking about, this, this guy? You must be joking. And there you see a departure from sense. A departure from logic. A departure from the correctness. A departure from prosperity. A departure from whatever. Just because of your hatred. That's what I'm saying that when you are dealing with somebody, check your heart and see. What, am, what streams are working in, in me? Is there some hatred in me? Is there some bitterness working in me? Is there some envy working in me? Is there some love working in me? What else is there that is clouding my clear judgment? And that's why Paul said, I, I, I want you to know that my judgment is clear. I don't like anybody's money and I don't like anybody's gold and I don't need anybody's silver. I don't like it. And that's how I've lived with you. I don't, I don't, I don't do anything to get things from you. I'm clear of that. So it has enabled him to live properly and to do what is right. You see, we have to check the things that are working in us. Because sometimes you say, I'm coming to check. But the reason we're coming to check is because of a girl. So maybe there's some lust working in you. You get what I'm saying? Or even when you say you love a girl. And why do you love her? You love her because she has a British passport and you want to marry her and go to England. What I'm saying is, is that it's the passport you love, isn't it? I'm saying that a right thinking, all the things that should go this way, they don't go. Haven't you noticed in life? Like, why should Ghana be poor? Huh? The sea out there, full of fish, full, full of oil, full of oil. Ghana is covered with oil. I mean, the oil that you have in Saudi Arabia, Ghana is covered from the south all the way. Tamale has oil. Buipe has oil. Different parts of the country, they're all covered with oil. Ghana is covered with gold. The like I'm saying that we are doing now is after Ashanti Gofield have cleared as much as possible for the last 70 years. And still, Ghana is covered. You know, Ghana was called Gold Coast next was called Ivory Coast, and then the top was called the Slave Coast. I mean, everyone was known for what he brings. And Ghana rarely is the Gold Coast. We are the rich country. You would have thought that it would translate to whatever. You know, I just came from uh, Bungpurugu and all those places. I tell you, <laughs> I mean... From Chiripone, where we started, we are driving on red sand. Some of the some of the parts, oh, in the Gold Coast, some of the parts, some of the parts, you 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 would have thought that they would have been tarred by now. Red sand. I mean. You wonder how the car can even be normal because of the red dust that enters different parts. But you see, things don't go as you would think they will go. And that's what I'm saying. Your life will not go the way it should logically go when the main thing that is working in you, either hatred, envy, anger, lust, bitterness, any of those things, it's very scary if it's in you. Because your, your mind doesn't go, you don't think clearly. You don't decide clearly. Nothing about you is clear. And it doesn't go where you would have expected your life to go. I mean, think about it. So, that's your, your case. No, no, our king eh, is Caesar. 
Is Caesar the one we like? We need Caesar. We want Caesar. Caesar is our main man. Caesar is the one we will choose. When we are choosing, we will choose Caesar. We prefer Caesar. We want Caesar. We like Caesar. I mean, why do you say these things? Because of your hatred for Jesus. And, who are, and envy, the Bible says. Because he's a pastor who a lot of people are coming to and people are listening to him. They are not listening to the Pharisees. They see the Pharisees as dead, dead pastors whose messages are not, no more alive. That was it for envy. Jesus was crucified. Beautiful. So I'm just trying to explain to you that you will, you'll be surprised. Look at that verse. Yes, for envy. He knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy, which is envy is a feeling of resentment towards someone because of his advancement and his improvement or his progress in this world. So make sure that in your life, eh, you take away don't let any of these streams, but um, they are working in you anyway. Yeah. Mm, they are working in you anyway. And that's why somebody said, I always try to have a pure heart. Which streams are working in you? Yeah, that you would have thought that things should have worked out well. Look at some of the nice couples sitting by each other sometimes, sometimes not. You would have thought that there would be peace, love, Joy, enjoyment of each other's whatever. Based on the pictures we are seeing. Based on the photographs they take. Smiling, very nice. But no, no, no. What you think logically that it should be, it's not like that. Because other things are working. That's why Paul said, I have coveted no man's silver. I, I don't. Look at me. I say, I don't need, I don't like anybody. So. These people said, we have no other king. Caesar is our main man. Caesar is our main man. And Derek Prince says that they were given Caesars for 2,000 years to rule over them. Because they chose it. And they have had Caesars, including Adolf Hitler, who ruled over them for years. So check yourself. If I'm standing here with, as a pastor and my desire is your silver and your gold, it would lead to my poverty. I'm telling you. And my decision to be in the first love church, do you see, with children, is a decision that is obviously devoid of a desire for uh, your silver and gold. Because the silver and gold holders are not in the, in the children. But they will be, you see. Then later on when you come and they are, and it seems that there's whatever, then you may be now saying that, oh, we know him, it's just because of money. So watch out, okay? And you see, you see sometimes, you see some people that you've known they, their whole life doesn't even seem to make sense anymore. It's because of such streams. Hatred, envy, wickedness, rage, anger. That's why depression, that's why I said don't take decisions when you are down or when you are deeply in the mood. Because I, I read once they said that only 10% of your brain is working. Yeah. Can you imagine taking a, a, already when 100% is working, doesn't, it, uh, you don't get a, a, a lot of high marks. Then how much more when you have reduced your brain to only 10% and you are taking a decision with 10%. When you use 100%, you got 42%. Well, that, that's serious. <laughs> so that's the first key to prosperity. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Even companies that don't have a covetousness. Do you see? They, they are the ones that rather make money. When you are too conscious of the money, before you realize, the money is not coming. Now, point number two. I told you this uh, message may be more important than the other one. You, you yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that are with me. The second is 
working with your hands. Working with what? Your hands. Working with your hands. You know? Um, and that means without delegating it to somebody. You see, our church is a youth group. But I myself am the leader of the youth group. I've not delegated the youth to somebody. My church is a prayer group. That's why the floor prayer meeting, I lead floor prayer meeting myself. And our church is an evangelistic um, organization. That's why I lead the evangelism myself. I don't delegate it to evangelistic people. Many things when you don't do it yourself and you don't work with your own hands, you can never really do well. You see, pastors, you send the person out on a mission, is watching movies. And you've asked the choristers to go for outreach. And you are not there to, to do the outreach with the choristers. So the point that I'm making is that working with your own hands, you never find a group like those of us in Africa who love to have servants that we are always sending. But we ourselves will not actually be on the ground. One time I was reading a, about one African nation. They were having a meeting with, I think, World Bank or so. And the minister who was in charge of the harbor, I mean, I don't know what the harbor was, maybe it's, I don't know whether, what the name of that ministry was, but the harbor, the main port, was part of his work. Oh, yes. And they said he had nev- not been there before. For eight years, he has been the minister in charge of it. He doesn't know what is going on there. He doesn't know how it, how it even works. They don't know anything. Not, not Ghana, please. It's not Ghana. But just, it was a World Bank something. And then the other minister, the, the minister of uh, finance, they were discussing a major, he was sleeping. Not Ghana, please. I, I'm, I'm, and I mean that it's not Ghana. Don't, it's not uh, whatever for you to think that. I beg you. Please. I don't beg you. I warn you. I warn you. Yeah. Don't change my message. Yeah. But the minister of finance was asleep. Oh, yes. He was fast asleep. When he woke up, uh, the, the uh, foreign person was saying, the World Bank man was saying something about the country. Then he woke up suddenly and said, our country is not a poor country. And then he went back to sleep again. <laughs> he just woke up to say, no, no, our country is not a poor country. Then he went back to sleep. Fantastic. But you see, poverty eh, is because we don't work with our own hands. Some of the roads that we were driving on, I suspect that they are recorded in our things that they are complete or they are completed. Mm -hmm. I suspect. I don't know. But you'd be surprised. They find others. Oh, wow. So learn to work with your own hands. Those of us who think money is just going to come to us, those of you who think being in the ministry is uh, you are unemployed graduates, so you will come and work in the church and get money and so on. I don't know any harder working organization than our organization. It's not easy to prosper here unless you are ready to work very hard. Yeah. One day somebody came to work with us. The person said that working here is like working in a bank. Yeah, because you see in the bank they have targets this, this. before you realize you are a top man so you've been laid off so, sorry we don't need you again go and find another job oh yes so working with your hands alright and then are you still with me I'm giving you keys of prosperity from Paul Paul's keys to prosperity point number three and I have showed you the first point is that I don't covet silver and gold. Don't have all those funny things in you. Okay? Don't have negative streams working in you. Number two, you yourselves know that these hands have labored. So work with your own hand without delegating. One time I was on a, on a, on a uh, plane. I was sitting by a white man. He said to me, I am the managing director of a big 
bus company. And he was flying to an African country. I won't tell you the name of that African country. But the name of that African country begins with one of the alphabets. And he told me that, I don't have a secretary. But my Ghanaian counterpart, everybody, they have secretary, this, this, plenty. I I do everything myself. I don't know why. And he's an engineer. He goes to work and fix the buses. Oh, yes. (laughs) But our big bosses are receiving invoices and signing things. That's all. Like my my chemistry teacher in a lecturer in university. You know, I did chemistry. eh? I did chemistry in first year. Uh, he had a term. He used to say, I'm chair chemist. I'm chair chemist. Chemist, he said, we, we should, he doesn't want us to be armchair chemist. What do you mean by armchair chemist? It's like we are supposed to mix some things and get a reaction and measure and titrate and do and do the experiment. And we did, obviously we didn't want to do the experiment because when you do it, it doesn't work. It never works. He said, no, 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 I'm checking it. Why you sit back and you just write things? Come and do the thing practically. Don't be an armchair chemist. We have armchair pastors watching Netflix from morning to evening and you want the church to grow. Watching movies. <laughs> you know, it's a common thing I've heard, pastors. A number of them said, we just watch movies from morning. They don't know how to be full-time. That's why we want people to be lay pastors for some time. Are you still around or you are leaving? I'm talking about offering now. You have showed you, I have showed you all these things that how so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So it's more blessed to give. So that was Paul's third principle of prosperity. First was I don't covet people's silver. Number two, I work with my own hands. And principle number three, it's more blessed to give than to receive. I did not three points. Is it not three points that you want? How many points do you want for the offering? How many points do you want? Three points. The first point is what? I don't covet anybody's gold or silver. Tell your neighbor, I don't need your bag. I don't need your shoes. I don't need your dress. I don't need anything that you have. That you have. I don't need it by the grace. Uh, are you part of First Love? Is it a First Love church or you are visitors? I said, tell your neighbor, I said, I don't need your things. Number two, tell your neighbor, I work with my own hands. I don't send, send people. Oh, yes. Some people to make one cup of tea, they will send about five people. Somebody to get the hot water, somebody to get a tea bag, somebody to go and buy milk, somebody to go downstairs and bring sugar, somebody to find a teaspoon, and somebody to get a tea cup. Six people will be working. It's too much. It's too much. Tell your neighbor, it's too much, too much sending. Everybody say, I want a blessing. Today we are going to give an offering and the offering is going to bring a blessing. Everybody say, a blessing. A blessing. Do you want a blessing? I want a blessing. Now, blessings and curses are just amazing. Look at it. Look at the new Jerusalem in Revelation chapter 22. He said, in the midst of the street on either side of the river, there was the river of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Wow! Imagine that. Do you see? Before the curse hit Ghana, eh? before the curse hit Ghana, and before, can I come down? Before the, curse, the, before the curse came to Ghana, and the curse came to Nigeria, and the curse came to America, and the curse came to Asia, before the curse, when you plant your seed, when you have a farm, you get your harvest that month. 
If you, yeah, if you plant in March, you get your harvest in March. Twelve different types of harvest can come in just that first month. So then in April, another harvest comes. Yes. Then in May, another harvest comes. Look at, the, look at it. It says every month. He yields her fruit every month. You get fruit every month. What people don't understand is what the curse, effect of a curse. The curse said, in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread. So when the earth was cursed, you will sweat like you work hard and you get very little. From the time the curse hit there, that's what the harvest is once a year. Oh, yes. That's why we work the whole with a, a farm. You will sow the seed. Ah. Once the harvest comes, the next month, like as we are in the north now, is dry season, no harvest, no, nothing. It's for one year. <laughs> That's how the whole world is now. Very hard. That's the effect of a curse. So, has reduced the fruits and reduced the prosperity and reduced everything. Yeah. Instead of once a month, uh, once a year. Uh, you can, you, and, and, and it has affected medicine. It has affected law. It has affected carpentry. It has affected medicine work. You will work. Uh, I, mean, I don't know which work. You don't work. Uh, banking. It has affected pastors. It, you, you work, 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 work. IT, computers. Working in England. Working in America. You work and work and you get very little. Few people will ever have a house till they die. Few people will ever have a house. Few. No matter the choice of work. It was not like that. A curse has reduced everything to exactly what the curse said. You will sweat. I, w- I welcome you to this world. Have you seen why babies cry when they are born? How many have understood why babies cry as soon as they are born? They say, nah. It's not easy here. It's not easy here. Why are we here? No, the earth was beautiful. You will see a hill full of fruits. I mean, tens of fruit, like food. It just harvests plenty. Every month. Oh, this one has come, then it goes, then the next month. Look at mangoes. You, you see mango tree just green, just green, no fruit. Next year is coming. Pear. All professions. Even arm robbery is difficult. Try to be an arm robber and say, very dangerous job. Politicians. They suffer. Yeah. Doctors. Doctors, oh, it's one of the, I mean, you will suffer medical school, you will learn and learn and learn when you finish. They will tell you, this is one of the best medical schools in the world, you know, and when you finish working here, let me hear you will be one of the, whatever, you are this, this, that, and whatever. When you finish, they'll ask you, where did you go to medical school? Say, Ghana. Ghana? Oh, okay. Uh, no further questions. Have you ever asked yourself, why don't the doctors visit Ghana every, those who have, or medical school have been trained, and they, why don't they, why are they not always around? Their families are here. Why don't they? One doctor visited one time. He said to me, I said, I, I, I have to leave tomorrow. I said, why? He said, my car is parked at the airport. When I was leaving America, my car is parked there. And I have paid somebody to work for me for three days. So I've paid. I have to go back. Otherwise, I'll have. I said, oh, but you've not, I said, I've not been here for 18 years. But I have to go. Whatever. My mate. Oh, yes. Name the job. And you see that. Instead of 12 months of fruits. Huh? It's now once a year. Which means work, 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 work. And get something small. Now, why am I saying all this? Because the Bible is giving you a way 
to introduce a blessing into your work that you are doing. The work that already has a lot of curses. Yes. And what is the way? He said, it is more blessed to give. It is more blessed. This is one of Paul's principles. He gave. It's more blessed. When you give, it introduces a blessing. Oh, yes. It introduces a blessing into something that is very hard. Yeah. I, would, I promise you, look, I've been working, I've been working for, since school. I've even been told that I'm supposed to retire, <laughs> go on pension <laughs> very soon. So I must have some experience. I'm telling you, work. It's not a small thing. It's not a small thing. No matter the work. No, that's why sometimes I see people who say, oh, I don't want to be in the ministry, I want to do this. I, I laugh in my head knowing that the work that they've chosen to do is equally once a year. Harvest. Oh, yes. Name the work. Name the work. And I bet with you, I'll give you five years. I'll give you ten years. But you have been here, you have been working. You know what I'm saying. Oh, because it's not true or True. True. How many years have you been working? 21 years. What I'm saying, is it true or it is partly true? 100% true. 100%? You have tried different types of works. Yes, I have. What are the different types, possible types? Of work that I have done? Yes. I have worked in advertising. Advertising? No, this is is an art student, so (laughs) you may say words that you don't really know what it is, but yes. Mercy. I have worked in the bank. I've bank. He's working in a bank. In the bank, I did different things. Different things. Like I did corporate communications. At corporate communications. Treasury sales. Treasury sales. Consumer banking. Consumer banking. Oh, all these are the. What are all these? <laughs> different things. Yeah. Different. different things. I've worked in oil and gas. Oil and gas. I mean, that's high sounding. Oil and gas. <laughs> I've done different things there as well. So. Such as what? Um, trading. Trading? Trading what? Trading, buying and selling oil. Buying and selling oil. How many? Is it cooking oil? <laughs> no, at all. <laughs> Palm oil? No, at all. What oil? Um, crude oil, gas oil, gasoline. Crude oil? Gasoline? Yeah. Jet kerosene. What? Jet kerosene? <laughs> you buy and sell? Yes, study. <laughs> wow. wow. And what I'm saying about work that like you do a lot of work and you get very little. Is it like, am I making it up in your opinion or it, is, it, is it real? Is it true? It's exactly that. Most work actually today, the way most. No, not most. Your experience. Yes, my experience. I mean, you, you get told that you are working for a bonus, which is once a year. Your salary is never really anything. So if you are going to get anything of any significance, it will be a bonus, which will come once a year. July. Yeah. March, February, but yeah, so you know, you're just doing hand to mouth for the year, you know, you take transport you buy petrol, you go and come out and then you hope that at the end of the year, when the year comes you will get a bonus which is, which is helpful and does it always come? no, there are years where you get zero yeah, and then you just continue again for another year and pray that after two, three, four years, there'll be a bonus and your life will come together <laughs> hey Once a year. Life is not a small life, oh. This world. The curse has affected even oil and gas. Yeah. So I am teaching you, I am telling you something. Huh? You must find a way to introduce a blessing into something that God. Do you know what God did to punish Adam? He cursed work. He cursed what? Work. Yeah. He cursed work. Just work. That's why all jobs have that. That's why it is one of the wildest things, greatest things ever to have the privilege of doing something that you enjoy doing. Because on top of all that, many people work hard and don't enjoy what they are even doing. It's a, it's a, it's a drag. To them. So today, I want to encourage you to introduce a blessing to your life 
and to your financial life by doing what? By giving. Because G- Paul said, Jesus said, it is more blessed or in other there will be more of a blessing in giving. So when we come to offering time or tithing, don't hold back because when you hold back, you are holding back something that can introduce some lightness or some change into the hand-to-mouth, as this man said. Do you see? Hand-to-mouth realities. That's the reality of every job. Yes, of every job. I heard one pastor say, nah, he's 40-something years, so he doesn't know what he has. He doesn't know what he has. What he doesn't know is that almost all jobs have that trend. After 40-something years, what do you have? What have you got and what do you, what do you have after doing this, that, and whatever? Yeah. So, it's more blessed to give. More blessed to give. Become a giver. Tell somebody, I want to become a giver. Yeah, become someone who has an open palm and be giving. Find the opportunity to be a blessing. Not only a blessing to your family. Not only what? Yes, not only a blessing to your family. Some of you are thinking of only your family. Oh, I've paid my uh, nephew's school fees. I paid my uncle, my cousin's school, uh, whatever. My child's this, my uh, whatever that. My, that's that's that is that is providing for your family. Bible says that if a man does not provide for his own, he is worse than an infidel. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about giving away, giving away. Give and it shall be given unto you. Give and it shall be given unto you. Give. It's rare to find a boss or a leader or a benevolent overseer. It's not common. It's not common. But God will lead you and bless you and cause favor to come into your direction. Favor that is beyond what you can earn. Beyond what a man can earn. Anyone can get. In this world, whether in London, in UK, in America, or here, God will lead to that. And I see a great blessing. Learn it from now. And remember, we come from families. Different families don't give. Oh, yes. You know, one time I had one of my pastors, and he was renting a house. And I, I was thinking, I was honored to advise him something. But I realized that, no, this guy, when I tell him, he will not listen to what I'm saying. Knowledge. You know, some people are not used to anything just going out of their hand. So, oh yes. Oh yes. The type of person who when you gives you money to go and buy bread, he will collect the change. He will collect the change. They will calculate with you. Yes. It's cheaper here. It's cheaper here. Hey. Are you there or you are leaving? How many have two parents? Many of us. How many realize among your parents you prefer one to give you pocket money when you are going to school? Is it true or it's not true? One gives less and one gives more, isn't it? One is a calculator and one does not seem to be a calculator. That's what I mean. If you don't take care, you'll be a wild calculator and you never give. Yeah. So be relaxed so that people around you don't feel tense when it comes to money. Learn to be a giver, no matter how little you have in your life. God will cause a change to come in this wild curse. The curse is too much. The curse is too much. As we've been driving through the different parts of the north, you just look and say, hey, it's not. And the heat. You would think that there's, there's a fire about um, 20 meters away. You would think that there's a fire. The heat. Yeah. And the ground is dry. And when it rains, it just goes off. It can't go down. Yes. Do you want a blessing? A blessing or a blessing? (laughs) Take your mighty seed. eh? 
and introduce a blessing into your working life by giving and giving today, giving tomorrow, giving onwards. It's a blessing to your life. Trust me. It's a blessing. It's more blessed to give today than to receive. Father, which art in heaven, thank you and thank you and thank you again for the opportunity that we have in you. An opportunity to give and everyone watching also an opportunity to give. Please bless our lives. Bless our financial lives. Bless our financial lives. Cause us, O oh Lord, to experience your goodness. And for everyone who is watching, cause us to experience your power. In the name of Jesus, we are asking, O oh God, let there be a release, Lord, from this curse which I've made harvest to come once a year. We pray for your mercy that indeed two months in a year, three months in a year, Lord, maybe even four months in a year, there may be a release of your blessing that we may not live and die in hopelessness and in sorrow of heart, in disappointment and disillusionment. Thank you for blessing. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now, take a piece of paper. I want to break the curse of disillusionment. Do you understand what is disillusion? You, disillusion, please, disillusion. Disillusion. This offering you are giving, uh, if you can write, I don't know, and add it to the offering, just write on a piece of paper. Disillusionment is broken in my life. In Jesus' name. What is the meaning of disillusionment? The people will know. Dictionary people. Disillusionment. Discouragement. Disappointment. Hopelessness. A feeling of disappointment akin to Depression, that is close to depression. Are you watching? Disillusionment. Arising from the realization that something is not what it was expected or believed to be. Disillusionment. Add it to your offering. I know it's going to create. Actually, don't add it to the offering. I'll put a bucket here. So after you, you come and put it in. And I believe that as you throw that paper in to the offering bucket, your you see, look at the meaning of the word, though. like disappointment eh, arising from the realization that something is not what it was expected or believed to be. Eh. Possibly accompanied by philosophical angst from having one's beliefs challenged. Angst is a German word, angst, fear. Angst or worry. Fear or worry. Anyway. Lift your offering. Father, I pray upon the curse of disillusionment and discouragement. My God, concerning every job, every aspiration that we have ever had in our lives, that indeed you save us from this disillusionment and discouragement. We ask for it, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Put one of the big buckets here. Are they available? Is somebody bringing it? Does a bishop need to go get a bucket? Are there not people that are working to hear what I'm saying long ago? All right. Come and put your offering in the basket quickly. Don't put the paper in as well. I want you to put that in the bucket here. We are praying over that bucket. All right? And that is going to be the end of it. Just put your offering in. Blessed offering in the name of Jesus. Remember, 
This is how to give. Please, most of you should be giving Momo uh, more offerings. One zero five zero zero four one. Don't worry about the e-levy. It's not one. Per, if you are giving twenty CDs by Momo, how much is one point five percent of twenty CDs? Or does it affect you? Above 100 CDs. Oh, okay, okay. That's not bad. All right. So 100 CDs, 200 CDs, 200 CDs, 1.5% is how much? How much is 200? 1.5% of 200 CDs. Two CDs, I think, eh? or three CDs. Three CDs. It will be three CDs. Three CDs. Three CDs. So if you give 200 CDs, your tax that is going is three CDs. Huh? Three CDs. Yeah. It's not, it's not so much. Please. Don't let it make you stop using Momo to give offerings. Please. We need you to give more offering through the Momo. It's better because that one it goes direct. Amen. Hey, today everybody is giving cash. Or you are waving your phone at the thing. Are you using your phone? Or there's no cash on your phone? Hey, lift your phone up. Let me pray for your phone. Father, let phones be loaded with money. Money. Loaded with money. I lift a barrier of 1,000. And I say the money will be above 1,000. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Receive this grace and miracle. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let's welcome the choir, I believe. Is it the Greater Love Choir? To come on stage. Which worship leader left your, your thing here? All right. Is it for you or is it for me? Drop it and say the curse of disappointment and disillusionment is broken in the name of Jesus by the grace of God. By the grace of God. Disillusionment is broken. Place your offering and put your curse breaking, curse breaking paper in this bucket. Just place it in. It's a prayer. And we are praying, Lord, let the curse of disappointment, huge shocks and disappointments be broken in the name of Jesus, Savior of the world. All right. Lift the bucket up. Let me just pray. Oh, come around and put it in quickly. No, let them, let them finish. Quick, there are two buckets here. There are two buckets here. Just come around and put it in. Don't worry, you can walk over the blue. It is now death resistant. Okay, bring the buckets to me. All of them this way, I believe. Finish giving your offerings and the bucket is the prayer. All right. Put it in the middle here. You can still come and put in after church. All right. Oh, yes. Everybody stretch your hand out. Let's pray over this. Father, we have written a statement that the curse of the disillusionment is broken. We pray 
that as we have put our prayer request before you, Lord, break that spirit of disillusionment in the system and in the church and let us experience a blessing that changes the way work turns out for us on this earth. We thank you for your great provision, your great blessing that has come into our lives. Now lift your two hands, everybody, and say, I receive a blessing into my life, into my work, into my financial situation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Put, join them together. Join them together. And I'm going to leave it on the altar for one week. By next Sunday, all these prayers you have prayed, you will see the beginning of a sign in your life. How many believe when God tells you something that it's true? The other day, God told me something and I was asking him the other day that it seems what you told me is not true. Then he showed me that it was true. <laughs> I was almost shy. Huh? God is wild though. Oh yes. God is doing great things. Amen. Bless them. Come and put them up. Uh -huh, yes, put it up on stage. Yes. How many would like your prayer request to be on the altar? Yes. At least for one week. You have, your prayer is written, is in the church. And God is hearing your prayers. You've written a letter to God. We don't know where to post it, so we are posting it on stage. Right below the cross. Is it a blessing? Wonderful. Let's welcome the gospel choir to minister to God.